That was a lot of questions. And the answers uh, were surprising. We finally got a number of people there at the end who might have been closest to the scene as Alec Baldwin fired that weapon, which killed Helena Hutchins, 42-year-old cinematographer on the Rust movie set last Thursday. And a fragment of that bullet now we know of that bullet casing we know from Sheriff Mendoza in Santa Fe, New Mexico, is what hit the director of the film, Joel Sousa, in the shoulder. They've been able to, to retrieve that. So they are now systematically putting together the bullet, the gun, and all of that. But the big question now is, well, one of the big questions, right? How many people were on that set? Who knew what, when, and could this have been prevented? There were, at first he said 100 people, then he said 90, and then we were back to 100 people. Look, there were a lot of people on that set. And now we know some 16 of them were close to what we'll just call the shooting action. Since we, we don't know from our own reporter, Jonathan Hunt, you can hear him there, well, is complacency a crime? We don't know what we're looking at right now. I'm Harris Faulkner. You're watching Outnumbered. I'm here with my co-hosts, Kaylee McEnany and Emily Campagno. Emily? there were some things that popped. 500 rounds of ammunition, a mix of, you know, live ammunition, blanks, dummies. We don't know how many live. He suspects more live. Your take. Here's what viewers need to understand, that safety is no accident. And so let's just take that general rule and let's apply it here. Everyone's talking about the negligence standards and criminal charges and, and the like, right? If you knew or should have known that something occurred, that's civil negligence. Now, if you yourself have such a reckless disregard for life, if you create such a high risk for great bodily injury or death, that is when you're criminally liable. So when we talk about finding live rounds on set there, we heard Sheriff Mendoza discuss that they found live rounds on set. That is absolutely unacceptable. He, however, was careful to confirm the amount. He keeps referencing the fact that the FBI has been brought in and the confirmation of such will occur at Quantico. Now, he also discussed the, the events that will occur moving forward, and I want everyone to understand that standard operating procedure. The sheriff's office there, in accordance with their jurisdiction, will keep investigating the scene, will keep investigating what happened. If it, if they, if it rises to the level that probable cause exists for a crime that has occurred, Heard, that they've determined such, they will make an arrest and charges will be filed. But otherwise, at the conclusion of their investigation, they will submit it to the DA. That's what always happens. And the DA is who determines what charges they will be filing, what crimes they believe occurred. Now, when the FBI is brought in, it's brought in because of either jurisdiction or resources. Here, they are brought in because of resources. So there, uh, New Mexico is making the position that they were doing everything under their purview. They have the cooperation of other agencies to ensure this investigation is as thorough and as accurate as possible. And I want everyone just for a moment to think back in, in 2014. It's a case that I brought up here on the couch before. When a camera assistant died on set, the assistant director served time in prison for involuntary man slaughter and that was the director the assistant director was 10 years of probation why because of that absolute reckless disregard standard I mentioned earlier and what's interesting there and why I bring it in here is because there were so many complaints on that set of right. that reckless disregard so many safety protocols that were ignored that were under the purview of the director and that they then that proved that it led to that poor camera assistant's death so here taking it back we have the sheriff saying we are aware of all of the safety complaints that occurred. We are aware of allegations of alcohol consumption the night before. Again, we recovered live rounds. Wait for confirmation from Quantico on that fact. Uh, but if they knew or should have known a live round was in that gun, if people knew or should have known if that assistant director was negligent, was had reckless disregard by allowing mm -hmm. those live rounds on set by the armor, by any kind of lack of, of protocol and safety, that's when we can expect charges to be filed. All right, I, I want to dig a little bit deeper um, from just what we heard. We're, we're going to work on the facts that Sheriff Mendoza of Santa Fe County and the prosecutor just gave us. Uh, and, and there was really a lot to get to. And something that Emily just talked about reminds me, and I don't know if our team has the 911 call, but when that assistant director, when, when, when the prop people were mentioned in a 911 call, it starts to your point, Emily, of there were problems on that set before oh, this yeah. happened. So my big question is, well, who's at the top of the food chain here? 
Is it Alec Baldwin? Is it somebody yes, else? Sir. Yeah. I mean, how does it work? And if safety is always the thing with guns, and you heard the sheriff saying it's always a thing, and Emily saying it's always a thing, it's always a thing. Did Eric, did Alec Baldwin know that there were potential live rounds among the 500 and ammunition, or rather, uh, ammunition that they found? Well, like, was there even a possibility? of this happening and was he aware of it? Well, there was a possibility and look, Emily laid out the law beautifully, knew or should have known. Let me give you some alleged facts that would fill in that part of the law. Now, these are facts I would think would be considered. One such is that a stunt double accidentally discharged a prop weapon that he was told was a cold weapon. This mm -hmm. happened less than a week before the Alec Baldwin shooting. Another fact we know from the sheriff is there was, quote, complacency on this set. Ian Hudson, who was an actor who filmed a death seen on this very same set. He said this. He said when the rounds were released, these were uh, blanks that were fired at him in his death scene. He said behind him, the crew was in the direct line of fire and they had shields in front of them. These again were blanks that were being fired. And he said when the rounds were released, when they shot at me, I actually did feel the blanks hitting my face and my body and I could feel the wind from the shotgun being discharged. It was heavy. It was strong. I would talk to my fellow cast members afterward. We all agreed how intense it was, how scary it it was how real mm. it was and he went on to say remember the last time this happened was that 1993 uh, death of an actor uh, to a prop weapon well he said they'd actually compared that set and how it felt on that set to this 1993 them incident. talking amongst themselves talking amongst themselves oh, that's interesting so there was complacency so and and if any of those people were among the 16 that the sheriff just said 16 or so who were closest to what was going on and they feel like they've talked to all 16 at this point, according sure. to the sheriff, then they've got what you just, it, you know, what you just described. And that's a big potential chunk of putting this whole puzzle together. If people can talk in that much detail, there's some expertise in that setting. Yep, comparing it um, to the death of Brandon yeah, Lee. I mean, exactly. that, that is really interesting. So you mentioned the word complacency. And the sheriff said complacency on the set is something that state and industry should look at. Mm -hmm. So from what he knows, there was complacency. We've got that 911 call. And remember, the script supervisor uh, was placing the blame on the film's assistant director in the 911 call. Let's listen. An AD that yelled at me at once because asking about revisions. This motherfucker, did you see him lean over my chest and yell at me? He's supposed to check the guns. He's responsible for what happened. Did you see him now, Mimi? No, no, no. I'm a script supervisor. Oh. He's supposed to check the guns. Hmm. He's supposed to do all of that. Yeah. I'll tell you who else, and, and I don't know how this all works, and, and Dagan McDowell and Guy Benson are with us today on Outnumbered, so I want to bring in our entire family for an hour. Hello. Uh, you know, I, I would imagine if you've been around movie sets as much as Alec Baldwin and television sets, so on and so forth, there might be somebody in your constellation who would say, if you're going to be handling a weapon, you too need to know just a quick two, three second check mm. of whether or not there's a bullet in that barrel. You need to know whether there's any round of any kind in it, regardless of what you may know about any round or any kind in it. You need to know that there's not one. If you're just sitting on the stump of the church at the set, which is what it's described, and you're gonna point that gun at the camera and there are people around, not with shields, the way that, that Kaylee was just describing as far as we know. What are your thoughts about this, Dagan? Um, this is something that you learn as a child uh, from friends and family members when you're taught how to handle a gun and when you're taught gun safety, that you always check the weapon to see, to make sure it is not loaded. But again, on a movie set, there is a, and Emily can weigh in on this, but there should be a greater expectation and responsibility for Alec Baldwin because he's not just an actor on this film. Right. He's also a producer, number one. But a cold gun means there is not even a uh, there's not nothing a, in it there's nothing in it there's right. not even a uh, blank in the gun the the biggest question is how did live ammo wind up on this set who brought it onto the set mm -hmm. and who knew about it and who allowed it because one thing i found interesting from the sheriff that of the five rounds of ammo they dis they ha discovered blanks which is a, a, which is powder no lead. They discovered mm -hmm. dummy rounds, which is uh, has le it's meant to look like a bullet. It's no powder and lead traditionally, and then actual 
what they believe to be live rounds. There was also, uh, of the three firearms picked up, there was also a plastic non-functioning revolver. That's a prop gun. Any reference to the weapon that Alec Baldwin discharged, killing the cinematographer and injuring the director, that is not a prop. We need to stop saying that. It is an actual That's gun. That's an excellent point. It is an actual gun. A prop is something that has no ability of firing a blank or an actual live round. So, but it's interesting to know that the, there's a plastic non-functioning revolver involved. Why didn't they hand him that? Like, I, I well, guess we won't ever know as you, he sat the, on the stump of that church on that movie set. The chain of uh, responsibility, traditionally, it is the armorer who mm -hmm. hands the, the actor or actress the gun. And why, this is something clearly they're investigating, but why did the assistant director, Halls, grab the gun off a cart? Why? And, and we should also point out, this is a low budget production. It was running a few million dollars. It's like a $6 million budget. They were under the gun. Which also fuels some of those complaints. Right, it was under the gun. The union camera crew had walked off the set earlier mm -hmm. that day, that they were trying to cut costs, trying to get the day in. And again, therein lies the recklessness that was bred. And we can say it was recklessness. It's beyond complacency because somebody's dead. Right. Okay, Guy, I want to come to you and, and something. And look, I, I'm not going to profess to know what we don't know. And I won't fill in the blanks, obviously, about the weapons because he wasn't all that specific. But he said an F. Lee Pieta. Uh, and, and based on that, it's a historical weapon. And, and they're beautiful guns. And based on what Dagan just said, there's no way you'd get an F. Lee Pieta confused with a plastic prop gun. I mean, and, unless they're just dynamic replicas of one another, it has not been described to us this way, so we don't want to go too far down that road. Um, but just the thought of what Dagan just laid out, how different these things on set would look, feel, and fire. Well, it was a real gun, obviously, with a live round in it. And my assumption, and we don't want to assume too much here, but I think it's a pretty fair and reasonable assumption, is that Alec Baldwin, believed entirely that it was a gun that if he pulled the trigger there would not be a real bullet flying out of it of course that's what happened and someone is now dead and so we've heard from the two lawyers on the panel already i think that they are really experts on the law i am not but as a layperson the word negligence immediately came to my mind as soon as i heard even some of the initial details about this story how on earth is it possible for that type of catastrophic, lethal mistake to happen on a film set. I mean, I understand it was a stressful day, it sounded like, based on the walkout that you just mentioned. There were some simmering tensions, it sounds like, from that 911 call. Perhaps people had been drinking the night before. We heard about those rumors. Maybe not everyone was at the top of their game. Nevertheless, how are there any live rounds? on set whatsoever when there are real guns on set. And I don't think from my perspective, listening to all of those questions and all of the answers from the sheriff and the, and the district attorney, I didn't learn a lot of information. The one piece that really did stick out to me is that at least based on the sheriff's framing of it, this was not just one real bullet. They believe there were multiple live rounds, yeah. multiple bullets on set. How on earth was that even possible, and who is responsible well, for that? Well, we know how it was possible. Humans made that possible. Yeah, but Guns who don't walk and why? to the set themselves with bullets in them. We just don't know which one, right, Guy? Right. And, and, and now we know that they have at least 100 people uh, on that set in conditions where there were some questionable things going on. So that that's gonna, those interviews are going to take some time, I would imagine. Real quickly, and then we want to move on. But I want to get your final thought, Emily. Just a reminder to viewers that the sheriff referred to Alec Baldwin as actor-producer Alec Baldwin. There you that go. right there shows you that they're looking at him with a level of responsibility above and beyond just an actor in that moment when he received the gun. So much coming out of Santa Fe, New Mexico today, where a woman died on the set of an Alec Baldwin movie called Rust. And, and the irony of all of it is there was trust that they were passing around, apparently, but with a gun that was potentially loaded with a live weapon. And I say potentially because we have to wait for the lab, crime lab to figure all that out. But the sheriff, Mendoza of Santa Fe, seemed to be pretty confident of it.
Helena Hutchins is dead. The director on the movie set, Joel Sousa, they took a fragment from what was fired from that gun from his shoulder. He's recovering. We'll cover more on the story as it happens.